Hey, welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. Chuck here. We have a list of uh, 14 properties today. And if you got the email yesterday and you filled out the form, you're going to get this book, which is the Sell Your House for Top Dollar book. You can see it's a real physical book. We have an ISBN number. Uh, so, I mean, it's official, uh, published through Amazon. If you want a copy, just, uh, just go to freetopdollarbook.com and I'll put another link down below to that too. But it's a great resource if you're thinking about selling your house in the next anytime in the next 12 months and uh, the second thing is if you go over probably about there uh, to the extras you're gonna see that we did a market analysis and we looked at some of the slides from the CMHC the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation some of, of their releases about housing outlooks for 2015 and 2016 we did some interpretation and looked at a couple things there and uh, and throughout some discussion so uh, the video is about 10 minutes it's just over there let's get started with today's properties now we start off on a very high note this one on Frank Place is 358.9 now you'll recall in the last couple days we've seen this model which which is the small uh, village town which is the Cherrywood uh, 1051 square feet or so we've seen this model list for like 389 at 358.9 I haven't seen a list price this low for this model in probably 60 days so uh, this looks really good I wouldn't be surprised if they had multiple offers on it and they are selling themselves which can create some very interesting situations especially when a property is uh, this competitively priced uh, owners oftentimes don't know the right protocol for dealing with multiple offers and so you find that there's a lot of confusion and uh, let's just say it can get interesting it can go either way it can it can they can almost just kind of shut down or in some cases right place right time you can scoop a good deal 754 Bing Court is a, uh, a four bedroom uh, detached home in uh, Dorset Park and so it's 499 good price point now it's a smaller four bedroom if you look at the actual room sizes here the fourth bedroom is 8.66 by 9.54 now I'm six foot four so you put me on a bed in that room and it's pretty tight so it's not a good size lot uh, it looks like they've done some upgrades inside uh, I don't know if that that almost looks like a vinyl floor which in some cases I think is even better than a laminate floor because you don't get that kind of curling on the sides and um yeah anyway it it all looks good i think they've done a a, a good job pre presenting this one they probably could have taken a couple things off this shelf but in the end i don't think that's going to affect them too much uh neutral colors and that lot size it's getting harder to find good stuff in this neighborhood for under five hundred thousand dollars so they're gonna probably do well the only thing about this one though main floor and second floor there's only one bathroom so there's no bathroom on the main floor you've got one on the second floor and then they put smartly I think was they put another three piece so so bathroom with a shower in the basement so if you need uh, either a, a bathroom on the main floor or you need two upstairs it's this home is going to be a little bit small for that now you a lot of people what they do eventually is they start building an addition above the garage and normally what I say for addition costs is you're about two hundred dollars a square foot so you figure your garage is probably 10 feet by 20 so a 200 square foot addition here um, ballpark would be about 40 grand to do that it's an easy roof line to change especially if you're going to change the shingles it's a good time to do the addition and that's enough space to do a nice size master bedroom with a closet and uh, in a small ensuite so that can really open the flow up and then since you already have four bedrooms you could almost put another bathroom up there in place of one of the bedrooms maybe the small one depending on where it is uh, related to the bathroom so thinking outside the box on something like this if you're looking at it more long term you've got a quiet crescent and you've got a good sized lot the rest of the house is actually you could add a little bit of space if you wanted to and even off the back uh, provided you're within lot coverage you can get the permit and get that done pretty quick next up we've got Ann Boulevard it's uh, a little over $25,000 more expensive than the one we saw on Bing uh, it looks like they've done a good job inside with uh, renovation and you've got a bit of a different size lot you're a little bit wider and uh, you've got two car parking in the driveway which is nice as well good looking home 
I like the comparison on this one on Cedar Bray as well. So we're talking same price point really as, as the end property. Now you're getting a true double car garage and inside they put a little bit of work in here. So um, the kitchen looks decent. The, uh, they did a bit of work on the stairs here. Skylights, California shutters, renovated bathroom. Uh, it looks like the basement has had some improvements. And now it says we're fronting on the south side of the street but this looks a lot like you're you're facing steels and or Thompson or some busier road and the 150 foot lots on Cedar Bray typically are the ones that have the busier roads behind so um, always want to check grading here I mean when you have a slope this aggress aggressive coming towards the house you want to make sure uh, right by the house that it comes back up and you have some slopes so the water carries away from the house uh, but for a double garage at this price point, um, I think it looks really good. It's same as the venue one. I think there's going to be a lot of attention on this one, even though it is a little bit busier with the, uh, the road behind. Now there's a drastic difference in how to take photographs and how to present your home. And we see a, a great example of that on We Will and then the next one that I'll show you in just a second. This is a Madame plan for 1835 square feet. Uh, we have dark photos, we have photo like you can't even see floor here. I was trying to find out what kind of floor there is. You can't even find that until picture number eight. It's like, okay, well that looks like tile a little bit. Picture nine is where you see that there's carpet. Uh, the kitchen has way too much stuff in it and uh, dark photos and so on. So we have a home that has uh, clutter and we'll call it, you know, more basic photography. And then if we look at the next one here on Swindale, uh, for a little bit more money, we have a, a much stronger presentation. I think they need some more pot lights here. Uh, but anyway, you can see that everything is simple, tidy. Whatever you think looks clutter free, you almost have to go 10 or 20% more because the camera really adds clutter where sometimes it, it's not even cluttered in person but very simple. Uh, these guys could have even added stuff on the kitchen countertops, but it's always better to err on the side of simple. And uh, it looks like a clean, tidy, organized house. And that is what buyers are looking for and bright as well as another thing. So great presentation here. Now give the marketing department a raise on this one on Inman Heights. Here we go, ready? Single detached home. Very simple to the point, but really no benefit in there. So um, I, I don't even know where the brochure is on a listing like this, but the point is, is you gotta kind of, you gotta work the crowd a little bit. You gotta uh, put a little bit more information if you expect interest to happen. Every part of this listing is what I like to tell people is your first showing. And the second showing is when they actually go visit in person. So you have to impress people online. So next up, uh, we're gonna look at two properties, rural properties over a million dollars. The first one, it listed as Puslinge. However, uh, I believe it's in Moffat. So the, if you look at the map, you can see that. Uh, it is a bungalow. Uh, it's on about five and a half acres. Nice renovations. The windows on a couple shots look really cl close to the roof line, but uh, interesting angles, nice looking house. There's a lot of competition right now between one and one and a half million. And uh, so you really gotta stand out. And if you're not in a hurry, that's fine. But if you have to sell these homes, even a well-priced home in the country can sometimes take three to six months to sell. And uh, so, Looks like a good home presented well. The photos, this is called HDR photography. You've got your pond. Uh, you've got a little bit more open space and there's even apparently a golf hole. It would have been nice to see that in the pictures because it's such a fun thing to have. Uh, so yeah, that's the only thing is they just, they have a lot of other good homes right around that price point. And, uh, and then the next one is Highway 25. And so you're just a little bit north of Milton. So the location to get to town to get on the 401 is probably one of the better rural locations at all out there right now. Um, so it is it, the proximity, definitely A plus marks. Uh, you are, I like some of the aerial, some of the drone photography here because you can see how far it is from the main road and uh, you can also see how the whole property lays out. Uh, obviously a nice looking home. There's not many homes at 2 million that don't look good. 
I shouldn't say that. There's a couple. Um, yeah, anyway, the, uh, the thing about this one, though, is that your audience tends to really uh, get pretty thin by the time you hit 2 million. So you have, there's a financing uh, barrier, right? So over a over million dollars, you're going to need 20% or more down. A lot of times lenders, as you creep up past a million, they start to ask for more and more down payment on a bit of a, a sliding scale. And, uh, and, and you just find that, that, yeah, it's like, it's almost exponential how, I bet you there's, there's, by the way, the sellers look like they're right there. Um, I would bet, and this is just based on experience that at 1 million compared to at 2 million, I bet you at 2 million, there's 10% of the buyers that can afford that, that property. So you're really narrowing down your audience. There's only a few people that are going to write a check for uh, for close to two. So that's the thing. What does that mean? It, it doesn't really, it just means that it may take you more time to find the right buyer. And uh, I think the other thing it means is that you really have to connect with someone emotionally. So there's a huge opportunity with rural properties to tell a story. These are homes that, that definitely, you're, you're buying a lifestyle. You're not buying a house. You're buying a townhouse. In some cases, what you're buying is you know, a place to live. As a first time buyer, you want something that's affordable and something that, you know, looks okay inside. You're not necessarily looking for the uh, the forever home. This is something that's much more long-term and you really got to get into the story. So for a great example of that, I'm going to put a link down below uh, to Joe and Zena and how they told the story of their house on, uh, on Bell School Line, right on the tip of the escarpment. So that's the list for today. Uh, if you have any questions or if you want to see anything in today's list, definitely reach out and give us a call 905-693-9346 and be sure to get this book because it really is filled with some good information. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.